as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ready. Ready. <laughs> yes, sir. If you want to see the extra ness, make sure you go to jorgemasvia.com. To me, if I can get to my feet, yeah. that's what I want. Yeah. I don't want it to be down on the mat. Right there, there, nice. Now see his head? There, oh, you broke the lock, you're good. Cross pummel it out. No, 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 you already headed out. Now elbow down, seal. Yeah, and now turn into him. I'm trying to move here. Yeah, now sit out. And let it go. So once, I, once you get out, pummel that arm. Then you slide to your under. I was in Madison Square Garden in New York. Uh, Bo was actually competing there. He was competing at 174 pounds, I think. And he ended up taking second, a close second, man. The guy's such a stud, and I knew then, I was like, man, this kid's special. Bo! Nickel! Bo Nickel, still undefeated this year, four-time All-American. Comprehend what you just did, you know, three titles. What do you think people will remember about the way you wrestled at Penn State? I was the most dangerous wrestler in the NCAA for four years. You said it best, most dangerous wrestler in NCAA for the last four years. Moves up on weight, pins everybody, then moves up another weight, pins everybody. And his style of wrestling, I love it. For those that don't know, I'm a huge collegiate fan. It's uh, one of my favorite pastimes, sports, whatever you want to call it, it's something that I, I, lo I love watching. The two things that I'm biggest fan of is traditional Muay Thai and collegiate wrestling. So obviously I'm a huge fan of Bo Nickel. Um, obviously a huge fan of Penn State. I feel like they're the American top team of wrestling, you know, what, what, what they're doing and, and a lot of their philosophies behind it. Um, Quinky Dink that uh, Bo eventually ends up signing with the same management company. So immediately I reached out to him. I go, man, I got to get this guy over here. Talk to Bo. We got to get him to American top team. I got to work out with this guy. This is meant to be, you know, this is one of my favorite wrestlers and he's actually in the same company as me. It has to be Bozo's cool ass dude as can be. Not only does he come down here, but he brings another one of his friends, Anthony Kazar, that's uh, another national champ. I don't know how many times All-American because the guy's another complete sud. So I've just been picking their brains, working out with these guys that have been watching a lot of my practices and just showing me the wrestling culture, showing me what, what they do at the highest level against other guys at the highest level that works. So me bringing that into MMA is just pure destruction to those, those crotch sniffers that are looking just to do that, that crotch sniffing stuff. I'm going to be able to stop that quite easily. And no fight has been booked. I haven't signed anything. This is just me. This is just what I love to do is improve. And how better to improve than get the best guy in collegiate wrestling right now, the hottest name, and, and work with him on a day-to-day. -day. If his wizard's so low, what, what, what do you mean? I would, like this, I would punch his face, bro. Yeah. I would literally punch his eyeballs. Make him, like, uncomfortable. You know? I'm going to punch his eyes and his nose so he's like, what the fuck is this? You know, like, literally, I'm putting my knuckles in his eyeballs. Coach is always the same, Mike Thomas Brown. The lady, the defending, undisputed, WAC featherweight champion of the world, Mike Brown! The man himself, 145 pound champion, the guy that knocked out Uriah Faber when Uriah Faber was the biggest name in the sport. Me and Mike go way back, we've known each other forever, we've worked out forever, he's beaten my ass, he's choked me out city, I don't know how many times, and then he transferred over to be a coach, and he continues to be this amazing competitor, but as a coach, I mean, Mike wants to win at all costs, he wants his athletes to win at all costs. Nobody digests more video than him, nobody's researching, doing more drilling than him. I, I don't know where he finds the time because at any moment that I walk into the gym, so is Mike Brown. Whether he's working with somebody else or me, Mike Brown is always there. He's got one of the busiest agendas ever. I mean, look on TV, he's on everybody's corner. You know, he's in California, he's in Japan, he's in Thailand, he's, he, he's everywhere, man. It's just insane that, uh, that he even has time to give to me. It's, it's still mind blowing, you know? Super legal, Mike. That one? Let me see again. That one, yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Can I see it? Let me see the end. That's fine. Yeah. No, it's this one that I'm worried about. Yeah. But we don't throw. You can't run. Yeah. He does like this. Then, of course, uh, Paulino Hernandez, my father, my, my great inspiration for striking, the guy that's the driving force be behind a lot of the techniques, a lot of my creativity comes from him. A lot of my work ethic and philosophies come from this man as well. Love him to the death of me. Um, it's an unbreakable bond. I love that guy, man. You guys have heard me talk about him millions of times. This, this guy's everything to me, man. <laughs> Come on, man. 
Ya estoy bien. La patada está saliendo y no estoy tirando duro. No. Tú no. sabes que si sale el asesino es un Then we have my strength and conditioning coach, which is like uh, my long lost uncle, which is family, 2 9 12 year plus, Jesus Gallo. You guys all know him. Studman. These guys are Paulino, Gallo, Mike Brown. They're competitors at heart. They want to win, and when I tell you they want to win, you, you, you can't understand how badly they want to win. All they do is digest film, reading books, trying to keep me as healthy as possible. So those three guys are a huge driving force in, in what I do on a day to day. I don't, I don't decide what to do. If I'm gonna go run, if I'm gonna lift, I don't do anything. They talk with themselves and they say, hey, he did pretty good yesterday. Let's, let's push him today or let's take it back today or whatever it is that they do, those three will come up with a plan, send it over to me and I'll just carry the orders out like a soldier, you know, just execute whatever the Pentagon is sending me to do. I'm gonna carry out that mission. Then after that, fake to the head. Body. Another field. Take your time, explosive and perfect technique. Which one? Perfectly. You already warmed up. It's perfect technique. Everything is on the money. Another guy that we got that you all know is Charlie Decker, my boy, of course. Um, I really got to give him a lot of credit because he helped keep me in shape during the quarantine. I mean, we beat the crap out of each other day in and day out. You know, he just pushed me as much as he possibly could, and, and I tried to do the same for him during the camp, whether it was on a run, whether it was lifting weights, whether it was on the mats. It's just the, the, the constant grind, you know, and that's something that uh, that if you're hearing this in any sport or anything you're doing in life, you want to surround yourself with good people that want the best for you and you want the best for them because then it's just it's like this ping pong wave of, of just give and get and give and get and just pushing each other to the top, whether it be in real estate or stocks and bonds. Whatever, but you want to surround yourself with a good team and, and be good to them and be loyal to them, and that's what I have here. And uh, I'm taking full advantage of it. You look at Masvidal cross-eyed, don't punch him in the face. Street Jesus doesn't fuck around. <laughs> Masvidal don't give a fuck. Damn right, I'm not a West Coast gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Connor wants that belt from Masvidal. I had a good run in 19. It's going to be better 2020. I guarantee you that. 2019 was the year of George Mosfall. Whoever it is with that bell, you're ready to hand it over to Arm Robbery. This combo, this conversation, it's not gonna come up till after the fight, so I'm not gonna tell everybody, I told you so. No, nothing is luck. This one's not that slippery, right, Mike? No, no, this one's broken in, this is old. My man, gangster. Yeah. He don't wrap his hands in nuts. The only thing that we're doing is kind of like hard, you know? We're gonna go in the square. When we go to the grappling portion, I'll go to the to the square one, Mike. Huh? Yeah. It's like, these kids speak open now. They understand Spanish, they speak better. Than but they could if they wanted to, though. Yeah, they understand me. I mean, could they like speak it from like you? No. But they'll understand. Sometimes they. It's good. Maybe. Just five minutes, yeah? Five minutes? Yeah. A minute. A minute. It's good, bro. And here you need it. In my. You should have been had it, but. Like Malaysia. What? Spanish. You should have been learning something. I, I worked on Portuguese for a while and I quit. <laughs> I used to be all Brazilians here, you know? 
Yeah. Honestly, I don't have a lot of friends. You and your car. He don't speak Spanish. He don't speak Portuguese? He just speaks Brazilian. You, so I, he can understand it because he grew up in Miami. He don't speak it like fluent. You yeah, man, Paulino. Is he, is he Spanish? Charlie. Charlie's Brazilian Italian. He told me he was Spanish. Everybody thinks he's Spanish. Let's do a round of like uh, warm up and half hand fight. Two and a half. Like light, two and a half hand fight. Then we'll go a lot after that. First one doesn't count. Two and a half hands, very light. Mm -hmm. Just warm up. Two and a half, let's go. Go. 